Here it's going now guys, Talk Narrow City here, back for another video. Hope you guys are all doing fantastically well. It's Friday, it's nearly the weekend, hang on in there people. Um, luckily I've got a three day weekend which is lovely. Uh, but I'm here today to speak about um, the whole Alex Pritchard thing and the transfer window so far. I'm, the more I grow old, not grow old, the, the older I get the less I like the transfer window because it is just a month of, of rumours, of chaos and no one really knows what to believe. Thank God we've got Nick Mascheter. Uh, the journalist who seems to be bang on the money every time. But the transfer window has started in probably the way we all expected to, but we didn't want to. Um, and that is the sale of Alex Pritchard. It hasn't yet been officially confirmed, but Wagner at Huddersfield has said that it should be done in the next um, sort of 24 hours. It's probably going to be done. Maybe even when you see this video, I'm recording this Friday morning. And of course, when you sell your best player, or arguably one of your best players, it's never going to there's never any good good going to come out of that, you know. I don't think I've ever seen a football club sell their best player and the fans are like, you know what, well done. I really applaud that move. It's, it's nature to not want to see your best players leave. We want to keep the best players and we don't want other teams to have their best players. I think there's only two things that can make um, a transfer like this slightly easier to take and that's if the money is right and that's if you have the replacements or you have faith in your board to reinvest that money to go out and get replacements. Now let's start with the transfer fee. Now it hasn't officially been confirmed. Some people were saying 12, some people were saying 14 and then Wagner comes in and says the, 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 the rumoured fee is wrong and we're not going to be overpaying for a football player. Well, I think I've said in videos this season, I've made a lot of videos, so don't quote me on this, and uh, I'm not sure if I'm right, but I was thinking somewhere between 15 and 20 million. Now, looking back, that's probably a wrong statement. Um, but it's strange, isn't it, with Pritchard, because he's still a young player, he's 24 years old, you know there's bags of potential there. And I think the most frustrating thing for me is we, we are yet to see the best from him and we're not going to see the best for, from him. We know that there's such a good player in there, but because of injury, because of being left out of the team, because of not really playing in the right system, we, we, we didn't see the real Alex Pritchard. And I can remember when he was, oh God, how old would he have been? 21? Uh, when he was up known at Brentford, putting one of the best individual performances I've ever seen at Carrow Road in the Championship when Brentford beat us. I think it was Alex Neal's first game in charge, actually. But if the rumoured fee of 14 million, 13 million is correct, I don't think you can be too upset with it. And here's why. This is a man who has yet to play Premier League football. This is a man who has scored eight championship goals for Norwich City in, I think, 45 games, which, yeah, that's a decent return for a midfielder. But, you know, it's hardly anything to write home about. And this is a man who has had consistent injuries. And these injuries, especially the one this season, has been a serious one. Will that crop up again? I'm not so sure. But if we swap roles for a moment if we're Huddersfield and we're going in for a championship player who this season has scored what one goal something like that and you're spending 14 million pounds on that that's I know in today's money peanuts but is a considerable amount of money still you're probably thinking yeah that's about fair um but then when you're in a Norwich situation you're thinking well we probably could have got a bit more with it the other fact is that to put in here is this is a man who wants out of the football club he's 24 years old he probably realizes that he's in his prime at the moment and he wants Premier League football he's I think he's taken a risk going to Huddersfield Huddersfield certainly aren't safe at the moment he could be back in the championship next season um, but at the same time I don't think Norwich are going to be in the Premier League next season so there's not going to be too much change there but I admire him wanting to pr play Premier League football I'm slightly disappointed in maybe the lack of loyalty considering we stuck by him when, when he was injured. We stuck him straight back in the squad. But this is football, you know. Uh, I don't expect anyone to be loyal nowadays when you've got agents in your ear and money, you know, coming in and going out. So that's that. Of course, I'm disappointed. I love Alex Pritchard. I think he's a game-changing player. We've seen that this season when he's come back into the squad. We look better. Um, the things that frustrated me, though, and I'm not going to criticise any Norwich fans because... I think everyone's entitled to their opinion, and that is the joy of football, isn't it? And I think it's very interesting the way people follow their football clubs and what they want to get out of it. For me, I, I, it's strange actually, I was, I was in bed the other night laying there, because I'm going to the Chelsea replay, and I was thinking, how much money is Norwich going to make out of this replay? You know, 200,000 from TV, and maybe a couple of hundred thousand from tickets. And I was thinking, well, we could reinvest that half a million pounds into Colney and maybe get a few new training setups and a few new classrooms for learning. And I was laying there thinking, 
Gone are the times when you're just a football fan, turning up on a Saturday with your dad or with your mates or with your mum or whatever, and just going and watching that 90 minutes of football and being completely taken aback and, and gripped by the 90 minutes of football you're seeing and then kind of forgetting, not forgetting, but you're not looking too in depth through the week. I miss them days of being, you know, that innocent 10 year old going to Caro with my dad, solely turning up to see my heroes on the pitch. And, and that was it. I didn't care about finances. I didn't care about external investment in the club. I didn't care who the CEO was. I wanted to see us win on a Saturday and that was it. And that innocence of football, I think when you grow up, disappears slightly. And that is slightly sad because I think you do lose a bit of love for football when you start to delve into finances and who your owner is and you see the horror stories of Coventry and stuff like that and it does get slightly, it does bog you down especially when you're not winning games and especially when you log onto Twitter and it's just a constant back and forth between people of should Delia be in charge, shouldn't she be in charge, is our transfer policy right, are we scouting correctly and it just blows your mind the amount that goes into being a football fan nowadays. Um, but, you know, I, I do feel slightly chilled out with this whole situation. I am now of the opinion that I am a football fan. I don't have any say in what the club does. I can only trust the process in which is going on. And I do genuinely trust the process that's happening at the moment. Of course, it would be lovely to have a billionaire owner who's chucking money at us. But there's also been situations in this league happening right now, Aston Villa, for example, where that hasn't worked. So it's not an easy win kind of situation. And everyone will go, well, look at Wolves, look at Wolves. Well, yes, that's worked and it's worked brilliantly well. But there's also five cases in which that hasn't happened. Now, that's also me not saying that I'm not unkeen for, for investment from you know foreign investors. Of course, I'd love to see us with money and I'd love to see a splash in cash on these exciting players but I'm also fairly chilled out with the fact that we've got Delia Smith in charge. I feel like we've got a good sporting director in place and I feel like we've got a decent manager in place. Now this £14 million, what's it going to be used with? Well first of all I do want to say I hope we don't sell James Madison and well as well. My tone may change considerably if we do that. I don't think that will happen. I think he's younger. I think he's got a bit more time in his hands. I think he really values the journey and the development and what he's going on. I think he's loved well, he is loved by Norwich City fans. And I think he's grateful for the opportunity he's getting at Norwich City. So I don't think we'll sell Madison. If Liverpool comes in with a £25 million bid, then things might change. But that hasn't happened yet, so I'm not going to talk that up. Now, is all of this £14 million that I'm speculating, 10, 12, whatever it is, going to be reinvested all of it? Well, no, that's not going to happen. What we're dealing with here is four, five, six years of complete and utter mismanagement catching up on us. This isn't Delia Smith. Well, it is partially Delia Smith's fault. She hired and fired people, so she, yeah, she must take some blame. But this certainly isn't Stuart Webber's fault. This certainly isn't Daniel Farker's fault. And this certainly isn't Steve Stone's fault. These people are the, are the people who've picked this mess up and are trying to create something with it. Of course, the, the drop in TV revenue and the drop in ticket sales and everything like that is going to mean we are making less money and because we're making less money and still paying some fairly high wages, you look at Stephen Naismith, Matt Jarvis, there's a few other players on the books who are earning Premier League wages and are not playing championship football, we are having to make up with that. The deficit is having to be made up by these sales. You know, we sold Murphy last year, we sold Howson last year, that wasn't all reinvested. Now, I've seen also criticism saying, well, Daniel Farker's signings have been poor and Stuart Webber's signings have been poor. And look, I completely sympathise with that opinion as well. I don't rate Mario Vrancic. I don't think Schiefman's very good. Uh, I don't think Marley Watkins is great. But you also have to look at Tom Tribal, who's been absolutely fantastic. I think you've got to look at Angus Gunn. This is a man who, had, who Daniel Farker put huge faith in and, and Angus Gunn has repaid him very well. You've got to look at the faith put in Jamal Lewis. Um, what other players have, have been really good that we've signed? Christoph Zimmermann, a fourth tier German footballer, looking nowhere near out of place against championship opposition. So these signings have been good, but when you make these low risk signings, the, the players that are maybe on 10 grand a week and they're coming in on freeze or minimal, you know, budgets, there's going to be one bad one for every good one. And that's just something you maybe have to accept going through this new regime. So my message to anyone out there getting slightly uptight about it, 
support your football club in whatever way you want. If you want change, you demand change. If you're happy with how things are, you be happy with that and you stick by that opinion. I'm currently a bit on the fence. If we sell the club, great. If we don't sell the club, great. I'm happy with just supporting Norwich City. I'm very grateful for, for what we've got. And admittedly, it's been tough this season, but we all demanded change. We got change. We were excited when change was here. And now we have to embrace that change going forward. And if we don't, then we're going to be put back to square one. And I can guarantee you that it will be the same thing. You know, we're in for a tough two seasons here. We have to stick by the players. We have to stick by the manager. Uh, yes, if things go drastically wrong, then yes, maybe change does have to be addressed. But I think at the moment we're doing okay. Um, we've still got a very talented squad. We've still got a bit of money in the bank. Um, and I think, I, I want to end actually on Nick Masheter, who's a, a journalist I really respect and since Stuart Webber's come in, has been incredibly on the money with everything he's tweeted. And he put out the other day, where is it? Uh, and I quote tweeted it because I think it just summed up my opinion very well. And often I retweet, so I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to say, but I just didn't know how to say it. Um, he put... It's where Norris City are at the moment. Pinched Brady from Hull in similar circumstances. Circle of life, I'm afraid. Important thing is how they build after inheriting a mess. Six, seven months isn't enough time to judge. I'll leave you with that. Let me know your thoughts on Alex Pritchard, on Delia Smith, on life at Norwich City. And how's your Friday going, more importantly? Um, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. I'm going to Bristol. I'm really looking forward to that. It should be a good match day experience going up there for the weekend. So I'm really buzzing for that. Um, let me know if you're going. There should be a match preview out later. Have a good day. Don't get too stressed. And uh, yeah, see you later.